I am glad to see you today. I have been working on some mosaics here and you know there's always something more to learn in the stained glass studio <laughs> and I'm learning and so I think huh I think you might be interested in learning this too. So what I've learned lately and this is like my new word is opus. Opus means work. And so I think that that's kind of what we're doing here in the studio is we're working. And as I found out more about Opus, I find out that it's a type of mosaic and different levels of mosaic are a different type of Opus. Who knew? <laughs> so first one is uh, an Opus means work in Latin, just for a little fun tip. So as we're here in the studio, I just wanted to, to mention a few things. So I noticed that as I am cutting these pieces, that if I don't have it in my hand like that, they'll fly all over the place. So be sure that if you are working with mosaics, to use your safety glasses. Also, to use a mask if you're doing some grinding or anything like that, that's a good idea. And also to have good ventilation. Always good ideas for when you're working on some stained glass. So, we are going to uh, first learn Opus Palladianum. I think that's how to say it. <laughs> And what that means is the kind of mosaic where they're just bits and pieces and you just add a piece, oh, that might fit there, or you know, you get other pieces and that might fit there. So what I'm doing is a background of whites and creams and moonstone and all put together in just kind of a crazy quilt fashion. And that's one way to put together a mosaic. As you can see though, I have also cut some different uh, pieces to look like the tulips and, and the leaves that are coming up. And so that is something different. But the crazy quilt stuff, that's called the Opus Palladianum. <laughs> so if you, want to, if you want to write in and tell me if it's, uh, that's the wrong pronunciation, I'm good with that. So this is a good way to do a lot of backgrounds. And I have done a couple of different mosaics that have backgrounds like that that I would like to show you. So this is another example of that kind of a mosaic. As you can see, all kinds of colors and shapes and stuff are put together in the inside of this one. And let me tell you a little bit about how I did this one. So I put down all of the pieces of the glass down on my table and then I thought, okay, I don't want to pick up and glue and put down every single piece. <laughs> and so what I did was after I had it down, I put some tape, clear tape all across, all over the place there. And then I just let that sit, make sure that the, the tape was stuck as much as I could to each little tiny piece. But let me tell you, it was hard because then after I started lifting up the tape, inevitably some of the little pieces didn't stick. So that was a trick. <laughs> but it was easier to do it that way than to glue every single tiny little piece. So then I, I put glue down on my board and then put it all back. So I, I lifted it up with the tape on, put it back, and then of course some of them were a little out of place. I had to fix them. David helped. <laughs> and, uh, and then I was able to, to wait until the glue was dry, and then I could peel off the tape. So yeah, get a good look at that. You almost have to squint to see that this is, these are the foliage, fall foliage of leaves, these are some aspen trees, a river, and some more foliage down here. Okay, the border is done in a different manner. Number two, opus vermiculatum. What that means is that worm-like. And so as you can see, that is kind of worm-like because it's little tiny um, 
this array um, just kind of in a worm-like pattern. It goes around your design, but then it continues and continues and continues in kind of a worm-like fashion. So that's another way to do that. I did a lot of that in a big mosaic that we did for a grocery store. The sky was done in that manner. So we'll show that to you here. Number three, a different kind, is an opus tessellatum. And it is, sorry, have pieces that are in lines, either um, a diagonal line like this, or a cross, or up and down, but they're kind of um, similar in shape, but they, but they make a line. So this was a good way to do the sky with these mountains. And as you can see, I've used bigger pieces for the big mountains, little tiny pieces that are similar shape, but different for the trees. And I love this water. If you can see just the, the water, the, sh the texture of the glass made a real difference. I thought, whoa, when I found that piece of glass, I thought, that's water. And of course, I wanted the tent to be different, so I thought, ooh, a yellow tint, that's gonna stand out. And the little tiny pieces for the fire. So this has a lot of, a couple of different ways to do your tesserae. And the tesserae are just the little pieces that you're using, so fun. So a couple of different windows that I'd like to show you, the uh, Opus Sectile. And that's when you use bigger pieces and then you just go around them with your um, different pieces of smaller glass. I use this a lot. So you can tell I've got a big piece of the water with little pieces around it. I've got, you know, the, the pieces of the cattails. So I use this a lot. I'll show you a different, a uh, couple of different ways that I put this together. So I've done this a lot in these arches. I was looking at a photograph and just cut the pieces like that and then the other pieces are just around it. And the same with the, with the sky. So just a big piece where the glass tells the story. I love that when the glass can tell the story and you just fill it in and just using your imagination. Mosaic is so fun like that because it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's why I, I love mosaic. I love doing stained glass and it is more detailed. I have to be more careful. But then if I'm doing mosaic, of course you, you actually want a little bit in between so that the grout will show. That's what makes it fun anyway. So the, that's just another way where you can use your mosaic to be more unique. Okay, so there are some others that I'm going to um, show you that we have pictures of that are different um, examples of these different opus. So these are just a few different mosaic techniques and uh, once you know them, then you can mix them up and just really have some fun with it. But you know what? Don't worry about what it's called. Don't worry about what the name of it is. Just put together your pieces of glass that are fun and you can use your imagination. And that's what it's all about, right? <laughs> and so until next time, this is Jeannie in the Glass Studio and Glass Gallery, and I will see you next time. Thank you.